Let's look at the warm gutta percha with vertical condensation technique in one of the mesial systems of this mandibular first molar. The clinical crown was removed with the metal lift instrument. Looking at the isolated tooth, you can see that we have shaped all the systems. In another just-in-time show, we showed how ProTaper can shape most of our posterior teeth with just three instruments. Well-shaped canals are conducive to fitting a cone. So in this instance, we're fitting a ProTaper matching gutta percha master cone. The cone is set at the correct length and the cone is teased into a fluid-filled canal. I typically have sodium hypochlorite in at this time. I'm checking the cone for short, crisp tug back. When I remove the cone, I can further look at the cone to evaluate where the scratches, striations, or rub marks are. If they're up in the body of the canal, it means you have false tug back. So ideally, we would like to see this marking right at the terminal one or two millimeters of the cone. After fitting the cones and laying them aside in preparation for obturation, it is wise to pre-fit pluggers. Pre-fit the largest plugger that will fit passively in the coronal one-third. Then you can choose a smaller diameter plugger that can fit deeper into the middle one-third. The goal is to fit a smallest plugger that will work within five millimeters of working length. The pluggers have convenient lines at 5, 10, 15, and 20 millimeter intervals, so we always know where we are. We can further be oriented by placing a rubber stop on the plugger if so desired. We can use an irrigating syringe to vacuum out the bulk of the reagent that's inside the mesial systems. Paper points are used to do the final drawing and to length. Let the paper points sit momentarily in the canal so that they can wick up surplus moisture. The paper point can be set a little bit longer just to see if the drawing point can be extended. Remember when we're doing endodontics we're off course about 90% of the time so all these little steps help us refocus and readjust our course. That part of the paper point that accordions a little bit represents that part of the paper point that is potentially beyond the foramen. We can even set the point at another half millimeter longer than we just showed and sometimes this will move through the foramen and it'll come out with a little bit of a hemorrhagic exudate on its terminal extent. That part of the paper point that is completely dry consistently represents that part of the paper point that is confined to the root canal space. The master cone could then be trimmed and adjusted accordingly. The trim master cone is then placed with its apical extent against the last file that was snug at length. This is kind of a smell test to make sure that the world we see is the world it is. In this technique I use Kerr pulp canal sealer extended working time. The sealer is picked up on the master cone and the cone is slid to place. Once the cone is seated remove the cone and inspect it. If the cone is still lubricated with sealer, simply re-tease it back to place. Go slowly so the cement can reflux and move back in a coronal direction. Since we're going to pack the mesial systems together, we would lubricate the MB and tease it to place. By pumping the cone to length or by using a vigorous motion, we can needlessly extrude sealer through the foramen. Now remove the cone like we showed in the ML, reinspect it. If it's denuded, we simply rebutter the cone and tease it back to place. The master cones can be seared off with the heat transfer device. And again, once the cones are seared off, you'll have a five millimeter heat wave through the coronal most part of that master cone. Thermal softened gutta percha has compaction potential. This wave of condensation is showing sealing the canal laterally and vertically over a range of few millimeters. The sealer becomes entrapped and the sealer can't move coronally and it's extruded at 2,000 pounds per square inch. Now we can reintroduce the heat transfer unit, come in cold, activate, plunge. Clinically we can remove another bite of gutta percha. Again, thermal softened gutta percha has compaction potential and we can generate a second wave of condensation. Notice the cone is unaltered in its apical extent. 
come in cold, activate, the heated instrument is allowed to plunge in three to four millimeters and heat will then travel apical to the instrument to the terminus of the cone. The smallest plugger can be used to mold and adapt the apical gutta percha into the intaglio of the root. Notice the significant hydraulics as we distort the cone and adapt it to the shape of the canal. At this stage we would start to backpack and I use the calamus flow device. The 23 gauge needle is very useful in posterior teeth, smaller diameter canals, squirt in about three or four millimeters. If you're going to get a void it would typically be on the first squirt. So a smaller squirt is a little better. Discipline yourself to step the plugger circumferentially around the canal, clean the lateral walls. The cycle concludes with a sustained five second press. The calamus flow cannula comes in, rethermal softens the coronalmost aspect of the previously established gutta percha, and again we syringe in perhaps four or five millimeters of thermal softened gutta percha. Use the pluggers methodically and deliberately to mold and adapt the gutta percha. Always condense cooling gutta percha to offset shrinkage. The backpack can continue to any level of the canal desired with an eye towards restorative dentistry. I usually bring the backpack up just below the orifice and leave the gutta percha about one or two millimeters sub-orifice. And of course we can backpack the systems every other time or we can backpack one and then focus and backpack on the other. Either way is appropriate. You can see how I'm deliberately stepping those pluggers around the circumference of the wall. The calamus flow cannula is very ergonomic, fits easily into the posterior regions. Thermal soft and gutta percha can be readily compacted and we can squirt and condense and squirt and condense until we work our way out of the canal. Again, backpacking to about two millimeters below the orifice. At the conclusion of the backpack, a pledget with chloroform is used to remove residual sealer remnants and gutta percha and we do this until the chamber is nice and clean. We follow that with 70% isopropyl alcohol so adhesion dentistry can ensue even using a eugenol based sealer. If we look at the post-operative film you can see the denseness of the pack. If we focus in tight on the mesial root you can see the deep bifidity and you can see the anastomosing between the MB and the ML systems. Let's review the warm gutta percha with vertical condensation technique. It all starts by having a well-shaped canal. Well-shaped canals allow us to fit a non-standardized master cone of gutta percha. Be sure to size the pluggers and select them so that we can use them safely during the obturation phase. Use paper points to ascertain final working length. Trim the cones accordingly. Mix the sealer, pick it up on a cone, and tease the cone to place, allowing the sealer to reflux safely back into the pulp chamber. Through a series of heatings and condensations, we can downpack that master cone and eventuate an apical corkage. The backpack technique uses the calamus flow to squirt uniform thermal softened aliquots of gutta percha into any aspect of the root canal system only squirt in three to four millimeters at a time and be sure to condense that in a very judicious way. This does not require heavy pressure with the pluggers. It would be analogous to packing amalgam into a cavity preparation. The warm gutta percha technique is used by thousands of international dentists because it's easy to learn, it's three-dimensional, and it fills root canal systems.